Hey kids, so how have you been? How was last week? What did you do? I would love for you to message me. Video yourself. Send me a message. Send me a, a picture that you drew. Send me something. Just tell me how you've been. How was last week? Did you play the game? Did you do the activity? Did you hide something? What did you hide? Did you find it? Did you rejoice? Did you have a party? Oh, I hope you had so much fun with that activity. Well, let me just say that I hope also you put Jesus' words in action. Anytime you realized you were doing something wrong, did you stop and did you turn around and did you do what's right? You made the heavens and the angels in heaven rejoice when you did that. And so I'm so glad. I'm so glad. And today I want to share with you another parable and and another way you can put jesus words in action and when we get finished with the parable i'll describe to you another activity that you and your family can do to put jesus words in action the story that we're going to share today comes from luke chapter 15. i'm going to read it and i'll read it out of the niv version if you want to pause the video so you can get your bible or your phone app so you can read along with this that's great it's in luke chapter 15. we're going to be starting in verse 11. we're going to read the whole rest of the chapter verses 11 through 32 32 it's like 20 verses but it will be so worth it because at the end, do you know what's going to happen? There's going to be a party. And so pause your video, get your Bible, your phone, and follow along. Oh, I'm so worked up about telling you, about sharing this with you, and the fun thing that I have for you and your family to do to put Jesus' words into action. So this story that we're going to read from the Bible, Luke chapter 15, is about a father, two sons, some pigs and a party now what kind of interesting combination is this story going to be so get your bible out i'm going to read from my phone and get your bible out get your phone out however you want to read and read along with me it's going to be the niv version new international version luke chapter 15 starting in verse 11. it said there was a man who had two sons the younger one said to the father, Father, give me your share of the estate. Give me my share of the estate. So the father divided his property between the two sons. And not long after that, the younger son got together all he had and set out on a set off for a distant country and they're squandered, squandered, that means gave away, like just kind of threw it away, all his wealth in wild living. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in the country and he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed, this son longed to fill his stomach with the pods the pigs were eating, but no one gave him anything. And when he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired servants have food enough to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. So he got up and he went to his father. <gasps> but while he was a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. And he ran to his son, 
threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quick! Bring the best robe and put it on him. Bring a ring and put it on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fatted calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this, the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. But meanwhile, the older son was in the field, and when he came near the house, he heard the music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him, what's going on? And the servant said, your brother has come, and your father has killed the fattened calf, because he has him back safe and sound. And the older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out to him and pleaded with him. But he answered his father, look, all these years, all I've done is slay for you. I've never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me and my friends a celebration. So I could, you never gave us a celebration. But when this son of yours that squandered your property with all with prostitutes comes home and you kill the fattened calf for him. Oh, the father said, my son, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Wow, that was a long story. Thank you for staying with me. So did you hear? Did you hear all that was said about the story in the story about the characters we talked about? There was a father Oh, he was so kind. He was so compassionate. He loved his son so dearly. And then there was one son who went away and took everything with him and lost it all. But then that son came back and and wanted that son was away. But then he came back to the father. But then there was the other son who had been there the whole time and had never done anything wrong. And so, did you see the pigs? Yes, there were pigs. How do you think those pigs smelled? Oh, those pigs stuck like a pig pen. And then there was a party. They celebrated. They had clothes. They had shoes. They had rings. They had food. The son who had gone away had come to his senses and he was who was dead was now alive you know what a dead person can't do a dead person cannot sense they cannot smell they cannot taste they cannot see they cannot hear a dead person can't do any of those things and sometimes when people, before they become Christians, they're dead spiritually. They can't sense God. They can't feel God. They can't understand God. And while the son was away, he was away from the father. And he couldn't sense the father. He couldn't sense the father when he was away from the father. But one day, you know what? That young son found his senses. The Bible says he came to his senses and he realized his smell. Wow, I'm with a bunch of pigs and they, they stink. But in my father's house, oh, those servants' rooms, they smell so fresh. 
and so nice. Even the servants have it better than I have it with these pigs. And then he felt that no one was touching him. He had no touch. He had no one to hug him. He had no one to love him. All he had, nobody was giving him anything. But he said, in my father's house, the servants had everything they need. And then he saw, and he saw there wasn't anybody around. He was all alone. And then he thought, he came to that sense of his sight. And he said, in my father's house, even the servants see all their needs met. And then he, he wasn't tasting anything because nobody was giving him anything. He wanted to, he wanted to taste what the pigs were eating. <gasps> he was in a miserable condition. He came to his senses and he realized even my father's servants have bread enough to spare. So what did he do when he came to his senses? He got up, he realized what a miserable place he was in. So he got up and he went back home. He said, I'm getting out of here. And so he got up and he turned around and he went home. You know what we call that? He repented. Can you say repented? repented. Yes. Remember the father in the story? Do you know that when the son came, the father had been looking for him. The father saw the son while he was a far, far way away. And do you know what the father did? Oh, the father ran to the son. The father hugged the son. The father was so happy to see the son, the father was so happy because the son had come to his senses that the father's house was better than anywhere else he could ever be. And so they had a party. The father called for the robe and the father called for the shoes and the father called for the ring. And the father called for the fattened calf, and they had a party. But then there was another son. You see that other son we haven't talked about yet, that older son. Yep, that one. I've never done anything wrong, son. And he came to the father, and he said, Father, I've never done anything wrong. And you never had a party for me. But you know what the father said? The father said, all that I have is yours. You've been with me and all I have is yours. But you see, that son had never sensed. Had never sensed how freely the father loved him and gave him. You see, the older son said, I've worked for you. I've slaved for you. I've been in the field. I've never done anything wrong. And so the father looked around and he said, all I have, son, is yours. But you see, the son the son of yours, who this brother of yours, the son of mine, who was away, he came to his senses. And we must celebrate because he was lost, but is found. And we will celebrate because your younger brother has returned. God is like the father in the story. You see, he wants us to start sensing how good and how kind and how loving and generous he is. God wants us to get up from all the places in our lives where we have gone away from him. And God has the best of everything for us, even though we may be like that younger brother and go far, far away. 
no matter how far we've gone, the Father God is always ready to meet us. He's always looking for us to come back because he always wants to run and give us a hug that we have come to our senses and we've come to his house to do things his way way. The Bible says, he who seeks God will find him. So this is what I want you to know. I want you to know that God has a huge party when we come to our senses and go back to doing things his way. If you find yourself in a stinking place in your life, and you're miserable because you're not doing things God's way, just come to your senses and walk away from doing things are different from the way God says. Get up and go and do it the way God says to do it. Get up. Go back to God. Say to God, I want to do it your way. I want to be your servant and know God throws a party for you. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for your love. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you that you are a compassionate God. You are slow to anger and you have plenty of mercy. And Father, I ask you that you would help us to come to our senses, to taste that you are best, to see that you are best, to smell that your way is the best and most fragrant way, and to hear that you have the way of life, and to feel that your touch and your help in our lives. And God, forgive us of our sins. We go back to you, and we want to do it your way. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, y'all ready? I've got the fun activity. I've got it written out. I'm going to um, send a message to you also so that you'll have it in writing. But here's the story. You ready? You're going to throw a welcome party. All right, so you have some characters. You have one son, you have one father, and you have a whole bunch of everybody else. Okay, and then you have some props. You have the robe which can be like a towel or a blanket, or it could be a bathrobe. You have shoes. Oh, get the most stylish shoes you can find. You have a ring. You can use a real jeweled ring, or you can use a play ring, or you can make a ring like out of a rubber band or a paper clip or a paper. You can make a ring. Um, and then you'll also need some snacks. Oh, yeah. And some music because they they celebrated. They had a party. And so what you're going to do is you're going to have the everybody in one room and then one son, whoever is the son, is going to leave the room and go somewhere else for a minute, for like 60 seconds. And the father's going to be walking around the room and just doing stuff and just, just kind of always looking for the son. And as soon as the father sees the son, the father's going to run to the son and give him a huge hug. And the son's going to say, I'm not worthy to be your son. Make me your servant. And the father's going to say, oh, bring the robe and put it on. And so everybody in the house is going to get the robe and carry it over and put it on. And he, the father's going to say, bring the ring and put it on. And so this, everybody in the house is going to get the ring and put it on. And then, and then the father's going to say, bring the shoes and put them on. And the father, everybody in the house is going to go get the shoes and bring them and put them on. And then the father's going to say, let's celebrate. And then y'all can have your snacks and you can have your music and you can have a huge celebration. And the father's going to say, this, my son has come home. He has come to his senses. And all that will be written out. And I hope you and your family have a great time putting Jesus' words in action with that activity. But let us not forget 
to put Jesus' words in action in our life. Every time we find ourselves in a miserable, stinking place in our lives because we have gotten away from doing things God's way, help us to come to our senses. Come to your senses. Me, come to my senses. Let us come to our senses so that we can get up and go and do it God's way. He really has the best way for us to do things. And so kids, I love you. Send me a message. Let me see your party. Send me a snapshot of your party or a video. I'd love to see it. God bless you as we are in this different time right now in 2020.